tout chez ma bouche respire mon corps toi qui sais comment comment boire à mon cou couche ma tête au creux de tes mains toi qui sais comment me parler et quand j'aurai fermé les yeux tu dessineras ton nom sur ma peau dans tes caresses tendre des lacances dans tes mains mon corps mon corps qui balance je pense à toi je me Good morning, everyone. Thank you. My name is Anne Bisson, and I'm a jazz singer, pianist, and I'm also a recording producer. I have a recording uh, label called Camellio Records. And uh, well, today we're going to talk ab basically about two things. And I'm also a keynote speaker. I talk about brain and stuff like that and stress, but I will not stress you this morning, I promise. Come on in, come on in. And um, I will talk about the creation process. How do an artist write songs? How do I write songs? From, honestly, from my point of view, because this is all I know. And I will also talk about the recording process. So before do, and the recording process and then after when we have the recording, which is, can be a vinyl. I have four formats. <laughs> I have vinyls, CDs, USB high-res cards, and the download, as you know. So, first of all, I started with a song because I think that human voice is, of course, our first instrument, right? A uh, hundred thousand years ago, when the human species started to walk, <laughs> They probably started to sing also. And that's what differences, makes the difference between us and the rest of all other animals. Birds, birds sing. And they have certain melodies that are beautiful. But I don't think birds can improvise and can write songs <laughs> in a way that we do. So what's really our mission I think here we have the, the, the ability to create we have the ability to uh, express emotions love fear all those things that are very specific to uh, the human being and this is not a mystery for me creation I'll talk to you about that later but I think that Singing is really the first instrument. It is, everyone can sing, right? You can sing. I'll, I won't make you sing this morning, but usually everyone can sing, right? <laughs> and as a recording audiophile artist, I know that the voice is tough to reproduce. We'll talk about that later. Um, but I would like to tell you about me, myself, where I come from, how come I'm here today, uh, first, well, I've, I've started playing piano. I was maybe four or five years old. And I must confess to you, I, um, we went to a, a private school, and there were nuns, you know. And uh, so I was with my mother. And my mother said to uh, the nun, she wants to take some piano lessons. And the sister said, well, show me your hands. So I showed her my hands. And she looked at my mother and she said, She's not going to be able to play piano. <laughs> she has two tiny hands. 
So I looked at my mother, and the sister said, we could teach her violin. But I hate violin. I mean, I, I like violin, but in my ears, it's too loud for me. I don't know why. So my mother, hopefully, she said, no, it's piano. She wants to play piano. I don't mind if she doesn't make a career. I just want her to be happy. So thanks, Mama, <laughs> because I took some piano lessons at four or five years old, and I never stopped playing piano. I studied voice later. I did a bachelor uh, in Montreal in classical. I'm a classical trained pianist and singer too. And I had this crazy thought um, a few years ago to go back to school and do a bachelor in classical singing. Just to, you know, to have a voice that is structured and everything because I believe in, uh, in tools because when we'll talk about creations, we'll also talk about tools because you need to have tools to create. Like uh, someone who's doing a painting, he needs to have brushes and colors. So I went, life went on, and I've been also a, a television host <laughs> and all kinds of things. So music was like this for me. But all the time I was, music was, you know, uh, how can you say that? I'm French, and you know, so I <laughs> was really appealing to me. Music was the center of my life, so I was going like this, and when I was doing music, I felt like I was at the right place, you know what I mean. So in 2000, I had done a few recordings, they were really, really bad, <laughs> well, uh, not that much, but it was another era of computers and quantized things, you know, in the 19th. Uh, and in 2006, I, I've, I've been through a lot of experiences in my life, personal, and I had to express myself through music, so I wrote the album Blue Mind, uh, and we recorded it in two days. And that Blue Mind album, which you might have heard, uh, I didn't know exactly what I was going, where I was going to be, uh, what was audiophile uh, recording. I ha didn't have a clue. All I wanted to know to to have is a good recording to record my songs, you know. But I was gifted enough, someone was on my, on my way, and Guy Saint-Ange, the producer, said, well, you're gonna, you're gonna come to the studio, and you're gonna meet uh, two great guys. I said, okay, a drummer and a bass player, double bass player. And he said, yeah, you're gonna meet them at the studio. I said, I'm not gonna rehearse. No, he said, you don't need to rehearse. Okay. <laughs> he said, bring your charts, bring your songs, and we're going to record this album. That's exactly, I'm not lying to you, that's exactly how it happened. We sat, we played, we had breakfast before, so I met the guys, hi. I was scared to death, you know, because these were really great jazz musicians. So we did the Blue Mind experience, and I started to get involved in the process of recording and hearing good music. I went to the, um, the Montreal show and I started to, to understand that some people really care about the sound like I did because I've always been an audiophile but I didn't know. <laughs> so I always had good sound system at home. But of course as a musician, we ha when I play at home I have a grand piano, I have my mic, I have what I need. I, I play, the piano is in my face. It, it, the sound is right there, you know? But when I listen to myself, and when I have such great gear, like this morning, I'll tell you about these speakers. I mean, for a musician, for a musician, it's like baking a cake and putting the icing on top. It's just like, wow, I can enjoy this piece of cake, because I know the ingredients, the ingredients it's me, the ingredient, and the musicians. But the, the cake itself, they dwell, and you know we can share it. So let's talk about the creation process. Um, I would like to know a little bit about you. I know where you come from, but raise your hands, those of you who are musicians. Are there any musicians? Okay, professional or non, that doesn't matter. Musician is a musician for me. Okay. Uh, any, uh, well, audiophile people that work in the, the business? <laughs> Great. 
And none of your five people, just, I mean, people who are interested in, yeah, hi, okay. And I'll try to be as general as I can, but at the same time, I think that creation is no mystery and shouldn't be something um, outside of you. Well, do you think creation or inspiration, I'll ask you a question, is something that comes from above somewhere outside of you? Do you think so? No. You're, I think you're right because creation, I think that creation is really something that flows in us. You have to be open to creativity in order to create songs. That's what I think. Um, and the state of mind is really important. I think you have to be in a good state of mind to create. Some people think that we need to suffer and stuff like that. Yeah, maybe. We do. We all suffer. We all go through different periods in our lives where it's easier or it's tougher. But first of all, I think that the state of mind to create is very important. So I have, um, I'll tell you a little bit about what I say in my speeches about the brain, because I think this portion could really be interesting for you. Have you ever driven a car and you, you're in your car, you, you go home, and then you arrive in your driveway and you say, oh my God, who drove the car? I'm home. I have never seen the road. I have never seen anything, but I am in my driveway right now. So your mind was somewhere else. Maybe your mind was at the office. Maybe your mind was with your daughter, which you had a fight with your daughter last and you were arguing. I don't know, but your mind was just not there. That, we call it in neuroscience, we call it binary state. Our brain is in a two binary state. So the space between the two hemispheres, sort of space, of course there's no space, but create stress, right? When you're in, you do one thing. For example, I don't know, you, uh, you listen to a good song, you play golf, you read a good book, you garden, I don't know, you do one thing, we call it analog, analogical brain, analogical brain. And that means that you are using both hemisphere of your brain at the same time. So the electric neurons, the, all the, the connections, they flow from one side to another. Now, just a, an aparté, when you play an instrument, for example, piano, you use your right hand and your left hand, and you use the analogical brain. You're in your analogical brain. There is no space for stress. You're in the moment. Like probably when you are with me, I hope, this morning. You're not thinking about, oh, I have another thing to go and I have this thing to see. And you are there with me. I can see that, okay? So that means you're connected with your inner self. And that for me as an artist, again, is very important to create. As an artist, no matter it's if it's a song, if it's a, a painting or anything, or reading, or writing a book, it's really important to be in that state of mind. So that was my little uh, scientific speech for, for this morning, but we'll go on with the creation process. I've been thinking about it. I said to myself, what can I give to those people? What can I say about creation. And I, get, I, I must say I've cheated a little bit because last year I was in Mexico giving a seminar about creation to music students. But you are not different than music students. So, and I was asking myself, what could I teach them, you know? I think there are three essentials, essentials, criteria to creation. The first one for me is awareness. 
awareness. I'll put two big eyes. <laughs> awareness. You you have to. You have to listen to a lot of music. I'm referring to music now. You have to be open to all kinds of all, all kinds of music, all genres. Even my daughter's music sometimes. <laughs> I listen to it. It's interesting. Rap, stuff like that. You know what I mean, right? Rihanna. And, well, I love jazz. I love classical music, contemporary. But I try really to open my mind as much as I can. For me, that's the first uh, criteria. The second one. The second one is humility. I think that when you create, you have to be humble. You really have to put yourself in a condition where, again, it has to do with openness, but you have to be humble. The third one, it, it, it's, it's my criteria, okay? But that's what I find, is the will to give. And as I said this morning, when I was, I knew I was coming to Rocky Mountain a few months ago, and I was asking myself, what can I give? Not what can I take, what can I give? What can I give to you? Who know a lot of things in the technical aspects that I don't know, but what could I give as an artist? And that for me also is the third criterion necessary to, to create a good song. So we'll start to listen to some, some music. So turn, turn, I'm okay. Um, I, I told you about the Blue Mind experience, right? And I had something very complicated in my mind. My mind sometimes is complicated. Maybe I'm a woman, that's why I'm, I'm complicated. I don't know. Um, but first, I wanted a a solo of a uh, alto. I had a very dramatic idea of that song, September in Montreal. But as I told you, that song from the Blue Mind album, we recorded it in two days with a trio only. So I had no alto. And then I wanted a flugelhorn later on. So we'll just listen to the beginning of the song. You'll see there is no alto. But I'll cue you the melody, you will understand. And you should hear what I mean. That's the alto. But I had only a piano. Paul. was written. It was no improvisation. That was Guy's idea. Fill the space and then that was my flugel horn. only have a trio and there the double bass will come in. Also for me, I've learned that it doesn't have to be complicated. The emotion is crucial and it has to be there. I had a technical uh, issue with the mic. I'll tell you about it in the, the technical um, part. But I sing also and I play at the same time. Okay? I, I do it at the same time as much as I can for the breathing. 
we need to breathe, right? I'll make you breathe uh, later on. Yeah, I'll make you do something. Not complicated, you'll see. But breathing is the first thing that we do when we are born, right? We breathe. And when you play an instrument that you don't have to breathe in, like a piano, well, the piano needs to breathe also, you know, the phrases. And when you sing at the same time and you play at the same time, you can, there's perfect control of both of those timings that you cannot do when you overdub. I know it because I've tried it. I must say I'm very good at, with overdubs <laughs> because I was the pianist, so I know exactly where to breathe but it's not exactly, exactly the same. For me, the best, the best in the West, as I say, is playing and singing at the same time. So that was uh, the, the Blue Mind experience. I'll talk to you about the, uh, the next uh, recording. Is I should have brought the, 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 the jackets, but it, it doesn't matter. It's portraits and perfumes. And that recording was differently done over almost a year. And it's a very good recording also. There are some fantastic songs. I will tell you about us and them and how we wrote it together, Guy Saint-Ange, the producer, and I. But for certain reasons, people have a tendency to relate to my own world, my songs and everything. So that's good for me <laughs> uh, because I, I like also to do standards, but I think I'm a writer. I like to create. I like to be connected with the flow, the energy, you know, that runs through uh, me. So portraits and perfumes don't mind the sound now, but I will explain to you what we're going to hear first. Well, should I remember you what was uh, us and them uh, many years ago? We started with uh, smoking good stuff, you know, and uh, everybody knows that song. So that's where we started. He said, we're going to do us and them. Eh, us and them? Are you crazy? I only have a piano and stuff like that, you know. So, so prepare yourself. We're on, it's a beautiful day. It's sunny. It's warm. I'm at Guy's house. We just had a swim, a dip in his swimming pool. We're on the, the terrace, the deck, with a guitar and a MacBook we push record. So we recorded with that junk thing there, okay? So I, I think it cannot be worst sound. But I want you to hear where that song went. So, oh, not this one, I'm sorry. I, it's a wrong cue. That's the, that's the one. Okay. You hear the cars and everything? We're outside. And after all, we're only ordinary men. It's just a guitar and a voice. Not even know the words, you know. I'm reading. Forward he cried from the rear, and the frog drank down. Okay, so I think you've got enough. <laughs> I'm sorry for Jeff Joseph. <laughs> we'll go. We'll go back to better sound. Oh, let us slow down a little bit. You hear? I entered the studio, I had never heard that arrangement. He didn't want me to hear it before. I had this in my headphones and I sang. Funny, eh? 
from guitar and voice. Yeah, oh, oh no, it's not a I have the right words now. Okay, well. So, just to show you, where does it start? And that's, that was the, uh, the, the final recording of that. And Guy insisted on the fact that I would not have access to this music before I entered the studio. Why? Because he wanted me to be fresh. Because when you record, well, when I record, I will talk about myself, <laughs> um, I do only one or two takes. I don't like to do and redo and redo and, and cut and paste and polish. I like to be in the, emo in the emotion. So in the moment, in my analogical brain, connect with myself, connect with what, I, what we can call the flow. Some people call it the source, the energy. I really believe that creation and inspiration flow. It flows through me. It flows through you. So when you are connected, for me, I close my eyes, I put my headphones on, and I'm surrounded by the sound, and it's just like magical. You ever been to Disneyland? You know those da 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 da, or those. Um, I felt like that. I felt like a kid, you know, and having this music in my head, it was amazing. So that was uh, a short example from uh, the recording uh, from per Portraits and Perfumes. Now I have another thing I wanted to share with you. On the l latest recording, I, uh, I like to meditate. I like to do meditation. It's part of my, what I like to do, and it's part of my speeches sometimes when I talk about stress. I, I, say, I tell people, do you meditate? You know, do you take time for yourself? Or do you feel guilty when you take time for yourself? So I decided to take time for myself, which sometimes I, I I don't allow myself to, to take a real break. And I went uh, up north in Quebec in a big uh, chalet, a big log, you know, exactly like you picture it in the Rocky Mountains. And it was a beautiful lake. So I had my iPhone with me. And uh, I meditated for 20 minutes. I have a, a tool called, um, I think it's uh, the power within or something. It's music. It's only music. It's a drone, and then you, you just repeat a mantra. So I meditated for 20 minutes, and I had a melody in my head. I was thinking about a cello. I had the cello melody in my head. So that's what I did. I sang from the beginning till the end, a three-minute improvisation, and that's what it was about. Um, that's here. Hello. I say hello. I say I want to. That's the date. May May fifth, two thousand thirteen. My voice is low. thinking about a cello. It's not me. Okay? I hope I'm not bothering you. So you hear? Now what have I done with this? Okay, it, it was three minutes, a beginning, a, be, a beginning, a, a development and an end, okay? I'll let him. I've done 20 years of television, live, so I'm used to it. Um, <laughs> I arrive at home, I took my iPhone, plug it in, 
wrote down the melody for a cello, right? Because this is not really my voice, but I, there were it's not vocal, it's really for a cello. And when I had written that melody, I found my friend, Vincent, fantastic cellist. And I said, come over, I've got something for you. So he played the melody. And then I improvised on top of that another real vocal thing. So what, so now let's hear what it is. And I called it, where are you? Where are you? improvised it on studio, in the studio. But you, you, you see the idea, right? And because I knew the melody of the cello so well, I could play with him, you know, because I could catch him somewhere else. I, I knew exactly, he, he was not improvising anymore, but it was improvisation on an improvisation. See, so that's, I'm, I'm having fun. I like to, uh, to, to go uh, further to try things. And you know what? When it works, I know it. And when it doesn't, I know it also. I, I have a few songs. I, 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 must say, I must say that it's quite easy for me to write. It's not something that I have to do and it's, oh my God, I got an album to, to write. It's going to take a year. It, it's just like it happens normally in my life. I, I have two children and they have never seen me writing songs. I mean, they've, they listen to my music off and on. And, and then I said to them, uh, I have an album. When did you record it, Mom? We, we, it just it happens like this. And I think it's about, that's about creation. It needs to be easy. It needs to be an easy process. So I, I know that time flies. So I would like um, to tell you about uh, the recording itself, the microphones and everything, or the position of uh, how did it happen in the studio. And because I would like to keep 10 minutes for questions, because maybe you have questions about how, how do I prepare myself for recording physically. I know that I don't eat cheese, <laughs> and even a strawberry I tried, and I could feel it in my, <laughs> in my uh, voice. So I have to be on a fruit diet, but very, uh, it's, it's funny. I cannot eat bananas and stuff like that. It's, uh, oh, singers, you know. But let's talk about the recording. Now I have all those songs, okay? I have 14 songs that I had. I play with a drummer, always the same guy, a double bass player. We've been touring for three years together, so we know each other very well. And for Tales from the Treetops, the third recording, um, I did it differently. Of course, I knew the guys now. We play together, we are friends. So I couldn't approach it like Blue Mind. We had a certain experience, knowledge, and I wanted to go 
and go over Blue Mind to, because Blue Mind is a, is a well, very well recorded album as you as you heard in September in Montreal. It's a very uh, good recording. But how would I go up? You know, the, the bar was like this. I chose a studio in Montreal. Unfortunately, Guy Saint-Onge had moved on an island five hours and a half from Montreal. So I said to myself, okay, I need a new studio. I need partners. So I'm with Moon, Semadio Moon, for since the beginning of Blue Mind album. So I needed good preamps, mic preamps. So we used the Moon uh, 3500 MP mic preamp. Uh, which is for me uh, sounds really really good and microphone for me for my voice I've tried them all but I always come back with a U87 I might try another one again because I'm I like to uh, challenge myself you know and to see well maybe there's another good setup for me but for now it's really at the U87 and those preamps are really important the studio was big, but I need a piano. The voice, I have it inside. But I always play on different pianos. So for Blue Mind, it was a Yamaha, which is OK. But I wanted something that had more you know, texture. So I have contacts with uh, stores in, in Quebec. And uh, I found a bosom door for nine feet. So can't see nine feet. So. A gorgeous piano. But we have to take good mics. We have to take the good gear because a good piano can be a good piano. But if it's not mic properly, it won't sound right. So we had the the bosom door We had Normand and his double, a hundred year old double bass, German double bass. He is the sound is oh, fantastic. Paul with this, all his uh, drums. And we had the cellist that you've heard. And also I have a very short duet with Suzy Leblanc soprano, a friend of mine. She has a wonderful voice. So the, the thing that we had, the setup was uh, like this. That's the studio. Let's say that this is uh, the window that goes out on a river. And the grand piano was there. Okay, I was sitting there. There was that double bass booth. We have to isolate those guys because they are powerful, especially the drum, but even the double bass. For Blue Mind, the double bass was in the same room. There was some leaking, but it was okay. But for that kind of project, when you have a double bass and then you have a cello, that was easier for us to separate the sound so we could really get a good mix after. So that was the double bass. And we use Lauten mics from Plurison. Plurison is one of my distributors. We, you will have on my website the digital booklet of all the technical information about microphones. So I won't, I'm not good with names and numbers. But I know it's Lauten, the Oceanus, uh, I have a few uh, of these mics. And um, there was a, a wall there with the, the board, and the, the, the producer was there, and Paul was in another room. But I could see him, there was a glass window, another glass window, but I could see both of them. Unfortunately, um, the double bass player couldn't see uh, the drummer, which is not ideal, but they played together like this for years, like 20 years, so we could feel each other. So that's how re we recorded it. Um, we tried to record uh, live also with uh, the cello, but sometimes it was tough, and cellists, are classically trained, I should know, uh, but they need a chart, and we don't. We're jazz musicians where we, you know, we go like this. So with a cellist, it was very tough for me to adapt because they are more straight on the tempo and everything. So to cue him, 
sometimes we had to, uh, we did overdub with the cello, cello because otherwise we would have still been there, you know. And we had only two days and a half to do a 14 songs recording, but some takes were first take, good take, you know. So let's hear the double bass of Normand on this one. It's called Everyone's, Everybody's Kissing in Paris. So that's from Tales from the Treetops. Everybody's kissing in Paris. The smooch and other jealous garbles. The chaperones of Notre Dame. Cupid's mates osculate at the Musée d'Orsay. Where the rendezvous and neck, like the brush strokes by Lautrec. Everybody's kissing in Paris. Snow comes are having a snug by the blush and the virgin of Saint Chapelle. There's lots of lovers locking lips and steaming up the Louvre, where I believe the Mona Lisa seems to approve. What a drummer. <laughs> See, the sound is different than Blue Mind. The, the, the piano is, is. my faders but I it's just a Mac but okay so that's the that song I was tough because because I had to improvise I had to follow the guys and I had to be everybody's kissing me in Paris you know I had to be the the jazz diva I couldn't do both together <laughs> I must say there's a technical aspect about when you sing, okay, the mic is there, okay, right, about, I'd say about four inches for me. And when I play on the keyboard and I have to play low or high, what happens? I have to look to see the keys. And when I look, what happens? You see my head? Turns. My head turns. And it, it's, na it's normal, it's natural. We don't like that. If we want that kind of Diana Krall sound or, you know, that voice that is just right there, I have to be very, very close to the mic. And if, I, if I'm close to the mic, then I'm too close to see the keys. I wonder if uh, Diana Krall or Nora Jones, I don't know, I, I don't know them personally, play and sing at the same time. What do you think? They do? At the same time? He does. Great. I, mean, I don't know about recording, but I'll see you. No, I'm talking about recording. Because oh. I play live at the Montreal Jazz Festival, and I play live everywhere. And I'm good live, I think. I, I hope I'm better live than on recording also. But the sound is not as good on recordings. But that's another story. It all depends on what you want to achieve, right? So. For that song, everybody's kissing in Paris. And it was a new song. I didn't write that song. It was a song that my publisher gave me one week before the recording. He said, Anne, listen to that song. I think it's a good song. And I said, well, I have already 13 songs. But my producer is very, he doesn't want 13. You know, it's very, um, how you say that? Superstitious. So I said, well, maybe we're going to have a, the 14th song, you know, and that was Everybody's Kissing. It's a nice song, you know, and we didn't have a jazzy song. 
So it fit very well in, the, in this project. Of course, we use no compression on the voice. I think this is really important to tell you that we do not compress. I am the compressor. Do you think I look like a compressor? But I am. Because I can sing very loud. And when I do that, I back off, right? Um, but we had a challenge. We had a soprano. The soprano, they don't sing with mics. They are classically trained singers. And I know about classical because I've done classical. So we had Suzy Leblanc. I must, um, there's an extract that I want you to hear. It's on an, on a drag. It's called Love's Philosophy. It's Suzy Leblanc. So the mic, the mic is further. We, we couldn't, had, had no choice. She has one of the most beautiful voices uh, in Canada, so soprano. I know time is running out, so we'll, if you want to listen to the whole album, I have them here. Um, but that was, uh, we had to do it after, you know, well, first she got sick. She couldn't go to the studio. And that was really more complicated than I thought to record a, a, a soprano, you know, that voice. But I think we've achieved, uh, we had a good mix of the classical and the, the pop um, blend to get blended together very well. Uh, a last thing I wanted to tell you about mics is that when we mic, I haven't talked about the piano. I've, talk, I've told you about the U87 we had here. We had two mics, of course, for the piano that we used with the Moon preamps, the three uh, 500 MP preamp. Uh, but I, we have learned something. We have tweaked the microphones once we had a good piano sound. I mean, the, be the best piano sound we could ever thought we, we could have. And we did uh, a song in German called Da Unten im Thale. The piano is awesome. It's in D flat major. We're just going to hear the first three, four measures. It's pure. Have you heard the harmonic? Ooh, there's a ghost sound there. And we tried to have that same sound of piano on every song, but we couldn't. And why we couldn't? I mean, the, the, nothing had moved. Nothing. N neither the mics, the levels, the, all the machines and everything. We just couldn't. Because I've studied uh, harmonics and, uh, at school. I've studied a little bit about frequencies and everything. And of course, a song in D flat major has a lot of harmonics that are specific to that, to not, uh, that key. And if you have a song in C major, which has totally different harmonics, then you would have to change the places of the microphones until you get that sound. So that's a dilemma. Because naturally, in life, it cannot always sound the same. And I think it's important for you, also as audiophile people, to understand our challenge. Because 
I've been going to your shows for three years, five years now, and I'm hearing all kinds of things. No, but it's, it's uh, well, first, some people, they will just look at the, the technical aspect. And I think you should approach music first with emotion, with your emotional brain, and then with your intelligent brain. Ravel, Maurice Ravel used to say that. And also, you can have a certain voice in the morning, like this morning, I, my voice was, was uh, October 11th voice morning, you know? <laughs> and at night, it's going to be different. And the piano moves. It was during winter. We had it tuned every morning. But the tuner might have, have uh, had a hangover, you know, and he could have tuned it a little. I don't know. No, it was very good. But what I mean by that, it, all this is human. And all this moves. And the sound moves also. It does. But if, for the next recording, I am patient enough, I would like to do a recording probably with only piano and voice. For the f you have a, a, come on, so don't want a scoop. Because <laughs> I'm already thinking about the next recording because I love to record, even if I do love, love live, live shows. And I'd say to myself, OK, alone with a big black nine-foot piano, now my, my, my husband is jealous because I, I spend more time with a piano than with him. No, I'm just kidding. But alone with him, just me and the piano, I would have time to tweak every song in different keys and try to get exactly what I want. And the voice, I would really have, you know, that that kind of luxury to, to take my time. Not that it, we did it in a hurry, we didn't. We really were relaxed. And there's a video on YouTube that you can watch. It's called The Making of Tales from the Treetops. So I talk about it and it's, well, it's, you'll, you'll see how the studio was. You'll see the studio physically. But I think that is important to understand that. So if we recap, the whole thing, because it's already 10 to 25, and I want to have at least five minutes of questions. The creation process is really important for an artist. And it has for me to be uh, awareness, humility, and the will to give to create songs and stories, because I write also lyrics. Um, and then the recording process should reflect the emotion and the music at its best. But first of all, you listen to the song with a terrace and a guitar, and you could feel the emotion. I mean, that was totally crap sound. But you could imagine. So for me, as an artist today, my mission is to make you understand the point of view of the artist when you approach an artist, and always try to Take your emotional brain first when you listen to music. And then after, you say, OK, well, technically, how does it? And with, then with the, your intelligence, you approach. Your, and I understand that is a passion for you about sound. And it is, for me, also a passion about creation and sound. So, so I thank you so much for listening to me to be uh, such a great audience. Do you have questions? Okay. I have two quick questions. Okay. The first one was uh, when the soprano was singing, uh, you said the microphone was further away. A little bit, uh, yeah. And I could hear the reverb. Was that an artificial reverb or was that the sound? It, it was both because we had a, a 15 ceiling room and you can see it on YouTube. You will see her. You will see the position of the mic on YouTube video. And the ceiling is, is big and we have uh, uh, large windows. And my second one is. When you're writing songs, uh, what usually comes first, the lyric or the music? That's a very good question, often asked. I must say that it's the music very often, and then I have an idea of what I'm going to talk about. But I've had two great gifts on the Tales from the Treetops album, two, two lyrics by Pierre Lenoir, a friend of mine. He wrote, Dry My Tears and Winter's Coming, which I think is it's piano voice. I love piano voice songs, so uh, 
So there I had the lyrics and I, I, I composed the music. Another question? Yes, sir. Uh, you know, you talked about live, uh, you know, versus recorded. Do you find that the pace of the music is affected more in the recording because you can't react with the musicians live versus? It affects the tempo, that's for sure, because when you are live, you're on adrenaline. You're sort of, sometimes the, the song is a little bit faster. Uh, it will affect, uh, especially in jazz, it will affect even sometimes the, uh, the structure, you know, of the song. But usually I try to be, uh, we, we communicate a lot and we see each other, all three of us, all the time on stage. And it should be like that when we record too, unfortunately. Does it uh, answer your question? Yes, sir. Um, when you... When you're miking for a, a, that kind of recording, who makes the decision on how to locate the cello and the double bass and the piano on the recording? That's a good question. Uh, the producer, Jacques Roy, who did the pre-production of Blue Mind, and uh, myself. And he asked me my opinion all the time. Because as you noticed, the double bass is uh, usually the double bass is on the left. But we set it on the right. And if you listen carefully to Tales from the Treetops, also the piano, usually it's the high notes there and it's the lower. We have inversed that because we wanted a point of view of you people looking at a trio. Not because sometimes we listen to music as you were playing the piano, but you're not playing the piano. I am. So try to listen to that. We really did focus on, because we, we knew that this was going to be an audiophile recording and that we had to go further than the blue mind. So the pressure was uh, quite uh, high, you know, on that. And I think that we, we did well because this recording is very uh, transparent. It has a lot of room. Um, there's a song called Coeur de Verre where you can hear it. You know, it's, it's, and I would like to, uh, to thank before I, I forget it, uh, Joseph Audio with his prism, the bien dit prism, and uh, Cardus cables for the Cardus clear cables, and Bel Canto integrated amps that we run through. And even we can hear, you know, that, that. So it's very transparent, and I'm becoming a, a real audiophile. <laughs> well, pretty, so I will invite you, if you would like to, uh, to meet me and discuss further. I will be all day uh, in the Evergreen room uh, selling uh, all three formats. I have the USB high-res card, 2496, because I really like the high-res format also. I have vinyls and CDs to, to be uh, sold and autographed. Some of you I know I have already purchased my, uh, my music. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, for giving me the opportunity to humbly tell you about my point of view as an artist. Have a great show. Thank you. Thank you.